This video is brought to you by MPEC Printery, specializing in t-shirt printing, posters, and shipping from the USA. Call 876-775-6692 or 876-337-7374. Andy Gone Nuts, 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876-309-6128. That's 876-309-6128. Refreshing and affordable. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Andy Gone Nuts. Mmm, truly refreshing. And Crumble by Mrs. C. Old English fudge and other delectable sweet treats. Call or WhatsApp 876-586-0471. That's 876-586-0471. This video is also brought to you by BLC Jamaica Security Electronics. Specializing in alarm system, video surveillance, camera system or CCTV, barrier system, gate automation, and access control. Call 876-320-7711. That's 876-320-7711. Or 876-351-1105. That's 876-351-1105. Hi everybody, I'm Darren Moore and you're watching Reggae Boys Country. Hello everyone, I'm Simon Preston and welcome back to Reggae Boys Commentary. Yes, we're back. It's Thursday evening, back in this time zone as well. <laughs> so we're back in the, <clears throat> the Jamaican part of the world. So I'm sure you guys have seen the, the latest squad. If you haven't already, what I'm going to do is bring it on your screen right now so that you guys can see and be more aware of it. This is a squad for the game's upcoming game against Cameroon in a friendly international on November 9, 9.30 a.m. Jamaica time. That's next week, Wednesday. Of course, as we know, this match is not during the FIFA window, so the UK-based players are not available for Jamaica for this fixture in particular. Let's go through some of your comments. The truth and more says anything on Baker and Gray and Henry. So, let's get right into the matter, shall we? <clears throat> the truth and more. To answer that question, you will have to watch the interview with Ricardo Fuller that I did. If you watch the video that was done with Ricardo Fuller, you will get an update on Louis Baker, Badly Morgan, Tyrese Campbell, and others. So I implore you to check out that video as soon as possible. All right? So do that as soon as possible. All right? Good. Timor Peterkin says, up, up bro G. How are you doing, man? Hope you're doing good. And hope you and your family are doing well. Trudel Moore says, who and who can you, can you honestly say W? I don't think I understand what you're saying there. <clears throat> but there is a squad in your screen, so everyone can take a moment to process it. I will be taking your comments quite shortly and putting an, an 11 that could work out well for Jamaica. So that is something that we can, you know, basically look into. So that's something that I want you guys to bear in mind. So have a look at the squad. I'll be reading it out to you quite shortly. And then from there, we'll be able to take into perspective how this team could line up in the friendly itself. So stay tuned for that quite soon. All right. So goalkeepers, Jamali White and Kemar Foster, defenders, Alwyn Harvey, Damien Lowe, Jamoy Topi, Javain Brown, Malik Howell, Ricardo Thomas, Richard King. Midfield, Demario Phillips, Devon Speedy Williams, 
Kevin Lambert, Lamar Walker, and the attackers, Dwayne Busy Atkinson, Colorado Mori, Jordan Fletcher, Justin McMaster, Peter McGregor, and Trevante Stewart. So that is the team. That's the Jamaican team for the upcoming game against Cameroon. Mr. Gallagher says, wait, Jermaine Brown, King Lawrence. Hmm. Well, I understand what you're saying, but we're just going to have to wait and see, see if Kimar Taxi Lawrence will be in the squad specifically. Who and who can you honestly say we should look for seeing soon? Again, the truth and more. If you haven't already, I implore you to check out the interview that was done with Ricardo Fuller. Ricardo Bibi Gardner, Cameron Eubank, Cuba Mitchell, Alika Keen, and in addition to all of those, Kieran Agard as well. Has the coach made any contact with any possible new players? Well, you're seeing it in this in this squad that you're seeing right here, haven't you? Is Ab says, bless up, Simon. Bless up. Hope you're doing good. Ty, what's going on, man? Hope you're doing good, brother. Good to hear from you. Good to see you. Hope you and the family are doing good, man. Enough respect, and I hope everybody's doing all right. Your end, man. So, yeah, doing good, and I hope you are doing well as well. So, the, the squad is out, and bearing in mind the lack of UK based players, <clears throat> and by extension, European, we can safely say that this squad in particular is a reasonably good one. And again, it's another opportunity for local players to show what they have in store. A great, great, great opportunity, you know? Great opportunity there. Champ Deck says, big up, Simon. Big up. Hope you guys are doing well. And yes, guys, if you guys get this video to 100 likes, Aldo, what is the deal on Rico Lewis at Manchester City? So 100 likes on this video, in fact, 150 likes on this video, and there'll be a what is the deal on Rico Lewis of Manchester City. As Ab says, the players travel soon. Well, the local contingent of the squad departed the island today for Cameroon, and those apply their trade in North America. They're making their journey over to the African continent right now. So. Yes, trouble has started. We know the match will take place on Wednesday specifically. So we can safely say that in due time, things will fall into place. So let's hope that everybody gets there safely, safe and sound. And there's at least two training sessions to, for them to get into. Shamar Lawrence says, Simon, will this match be shown on TV? Well, the Jamaica Football Federation has not confirmed this just yet. You know, what I can say is that the Reggae Girls encounters should be. But in terms of this game in particular against Cameroon, nothing has been confirmed just yet. The match is not until next week, Wednesday. And I expect a decision on this encounter to be made sometime around Monday or Tuesday. You know, when it comes to friendly's decisions as it relates to TV, rights viewership is normally down to the last minute for friendlies so i would say don't expect a final decision on this matter until roughly 48 to 72 hours before kickoff so i'd say give it a little bit of patience and over time you'll be able to see basically the makeup of the the squad in particular so that's what i would say where where this matter is done so so that's something that we should Bear in mind, you know. So let's hope that that's something we'll be able to have it quite soon. But like I said, guys, if you guys just tune in, come on, guys, like this video. Let's go. Let's get to 150 likes. Let's go. And there will be a what is the deal on Rico Lewis. So you guys know exactly what you need to do. Mr. Galaxy says, breaking girls. Yeah, you're absolutely right there. 100% right there. Ty says, all is well. Great, man. Great to hear that your family 
are doing well and good to hear from you and when you're on the island you let me know as well all right mr gallagher says drew and rebecca need to get jessica <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know it's an interesting one you know Jessica Nas 22 year old also she played at, at Arsenal as well I believe Jessica Nas hmm. London born girl and Jessica Ness. Interesting, isn't it? So, yeah. Jessica Ness, 22, played for England at the under 17 and then the under 19 level as well. Had a, this, this injury back in 2019, missed the entire season. But she's getting back to her best. And slowly but surely working out. Is there an X friendly in the works? Yes, I can confirm that there is an X friendly in the works. And it definitely is a team that is booked their ticket towards the World Cup. What I can say at this point in time is that that friendly match that is in the works, it's not an encounter that is confirmed right now. As in, it's not signed, sealed, delivered, if you understand what I mean. There are still some <clears throat> matters to be. I know as it relates to that fixture in particular in relation to venue and just small details. And once those small details can be, you know, over the line, then you'll be able to see exactly this fixture being announced officially. And we'll be able to see the, the reggae girls and the reggae boys in one more game before the end of the calendar year. So I can definitely say it's it's good. Simon in the documentary. What do you think about the comments regarding Ravel? I guess you're referring to what was said by Andre Blake. And there are some players in the team that hold on to the ball longer than others. And my simple answer to that is this. In a team, in a eleven. You have one player that is allowed to be, I don't want to say difficult, but you have that license for one player to have that freedom, that creativity, to have that ball retention. And Ravel is that person. If there's one player out of that 11 that I don't mind trying something, whether it's holding onto the ball a few more seconds, it's Ravel. And it can be argued there may be moments in the game where he should have passed instead of taking a shot. But look, he's our Bruno Fernandes in this sort of scenario. And for me, Ravel, I'm not saying that he can't do anything wrong. But what I'm saying quite simply is that a person of his ability, his caliber, his skill set, quite simply, is that I don't have an issue with him hanging on to the ball a little more than the others in the team. Because if there's one person that I want on the ball that is going to feed the center forward, then it's going to be Ravel Marson. It's not that Ravel said anything. It was Andre Blake sitting around a table with Javon East and another individual. And look, I, I already did a video on this BM regarding my reaction to the captains. So again, I implore you to go back in the series and look at the reaction video that I did to the captain series. Okay. Good. Mr. Galaxy says, Oh, stop this Ravel about Bruno Fernandes. <laughs> no, I'm not dissing Ravel. I'm not dissing him at all. Ravel Morrison is an absolute G. And I've seen I've seen Bruno Fernandes play in my life. I've seen Bruno Fernandes score in my life. I've even seen Fred score. I'm one of the few persons on this an entire planet that has seen Fred score a goal. Just let that sink in. So basically, Ravel Morrison is an absolute G. So just let that sink in. Mario Russell says, as long as they don't play him as a CDM, Ravel Morrison is not a CDM. Ravel Morrison is a number 10. Ravel Morrison is not a CDM. He's the furthest thing from a CDM. The farthest thing, in fact. 
we need to get us get CDMs, LOL. Hmm. Well, it's an area on the field that I would say definitely needs a bit of reinforcements. I'll, I'll definitely say that. The, the, the coach also spoke about the defense being something that he wants to strengthen in, in on. So I'm looking for I'm looking forward to that. I genuinely am. I'm just saying Ravel should set an example. Don't berate players for doing exactly what you're doing. Mm, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Ravel's rules and responsibilities are not the same as an Andre Blake or a Damien Lowe or Adrian Mariapa, if you understand what I mean. So that's something that we need to bear in mind 150%. You know what I'm saying? I see Jamaica team do that with him. Do what with him specifically? But for those of you that are just tuning in, hit that like button. If we get to 150 likes, then we will do a what is the deal on Rico Lewis. Yes, that's right. Manchester City right back. Burry, born and bred lad, Manchester City academy lad. And as we know, he scored in Europe quite recently. A couple of games in the Champions League, so... But yeah. The squad, Jamali Wade, Kemar Foster, Alwyn Harvey, Damien Lowe, Jamoy Topi, Javain Brown, Malik Howell, Ricardo Thomas, Richard King, Demari Phillips, Devon Williams, Duane Atkinson, Kevin Lambert, Lamar Walker, Colorado Murray, Jordan Fletcher, Justin McMaster, Peter McGregor, and Trevante Stewart. <clears throat> so that is the squad for the Jamaican team as they take get set to take on Cameroon in the CONCACAF, CONCACAF in a friendly international coming quite soon. Yeah, something for us to look forward to, isn't it? Exciting times ahead. For, for certain, you know? What are your guys' expectations of the game? As quite shortly, I will be putting up an 11 that I feel should take the field against Cameroon. And from there, you guys can give me your thought process of things. If you have already, do let me know as well if you've watched the game. The the videos that I've done, the interviews with Ricardo Fuller, Ricardo Vipi Gardner, Cuba Mitchell, Darren Moore, and company. If you haven't, well, I implore you to do so. <clears throat> it's imperative, you know. Do check it out, and you'll be able to get some insights. Cameron Eubank and and many many others. Trust me, it's one that you will greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate. So, so do check it out. You will be encouraged by the future that lies ahead. Where's Malik Howell playing? Malik Howell is playing University of Memphis. Is Peter McGregor even match fit? <laughs> He's getting there. He's getting there. For sure. Um, you'll see. What kind of results can we look forward to for this game? The Cameroon game? Now, I've always been consistent tie as it relates to friendly matches, and it's not something that I'm going to switch my tongue about. So I'm going to reiterate again in terms of my thoughts about friendly matches. For me, it's all about the performance. It's not about the result. If the result comes with the performance, brilliant. Absolutely great. You know what I'm saying? So that is where I stand in relation to this matter in particular. Now, what can we look forward to for this game against 
Cameroon. I'm hoping for there to be a bit more defensive organization. There are some youthful attacking players that like, have the ability to express themselves, the likes of Fletcher, McMaster, McGregor. You know, I do think that this is an opportunity for the young players to express themselves, to go out there, no fear against a team that will be at the World Cup. Just go out there, do your best, be expressive, have that freedom. Is there a reason for no Ravelino? Mm, you want some time off. Looking forward to McGregor and McMaster getting some minutes. Oh, yes. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but the last team that he played for was University of Memphis. Cargo match this. Mm, nah. That's your prediction. Jamaica 2, Cameroon 1. Well, that would do extremely well in terms of the FIFA rankings. <clears throat> I can tell you that for sure. Open the grill? What do you mean, open the grill? I don't understand what you mean when you say open the grill. So, what 11 can the Jamaicans use against Cameroon in this upcoming game? Well, let's have a look, shall we? What would be a good 11? And I see your comments, and I'm going to get to it quite shortly. First, let's look at system, yeah? That's the first aspect that we'll consider here. Yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know. But guess what? You got to do what you got to do at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So this is the team, and this is the way I'd like the Jamaicans to set up against Cameroon. Five, three, two. Midfield three here. The attacking two here. The back five here. There we go. And the goalkeeper here, of course. And this is the ball. <coughs> All right. So in goal, I'm going to give a debut to Jamali Waite. Right back. Gonna go with Shabane Brown. I'm gonna say that Taxi doesn't come. I'm not hoping that he doesn't come. But well, another chance for Ricardo Thomas. Richard King. Jamoy Topi. Damien Lowe. Three twin tower center halves at the back. The midfield now, well, you could say this is where things get a little bit interesting, eh? Devon Speedy Williams. Devon Lambert. In front of them is going to be the interesting one. This is where you can say, hmm. But I'm going to go with a walker. Jordan Fletcher scored against Qatar. So he basically retains that spot. And I'm giving a debut to Justin McMaster. This is the team that I've gone with for this game. McMaster no, can play in a front two. So not, not something that he's unfamiliar with as he has played in this role at Wake Forest, played on the right. When he gets possession of the ball, sometimes cuts in onto his left foot 
and he's able to feed the ball to his his teammate up top, Fletcher, right foot, bang here. The wider areas, Jervain Brown <clears throat> and Thomas. Now with, with Brown, he is going to need to ensure that his runs, his movements are precise to a T. He cannot afford when not in possession. Basically, the team, when his team is not in possession, he cannot afford to be so high up the park because this space right here will be exploited. And the same thing for Thomas as well. This is acres of space for the opposition to work with. So when not in position, you'd want them to occupy positions minimum here. If they're here, then you know it's going to be challenging for the Cameroonian outfit. But here, you know, at least they would have to go along and Richard King can perhaps mop it up. Tomoy Topi has the ability to mop it up here as well. If they go centrally, Damon Lowe can head it out here as well. So I know for a fact that the middle is congested. The middle is congested. <clears throat> so again, it's going to go back to the opposition using these wider areas to full effect. Will they use it effectively? That's going to be imperative. And how, when we have possession, can we transition quickly enough to feed these two players? That, at the end of the day, will be imperative from a Jamaican standpoint. <clears throat> well, when you're bearing in mind the accident that he had, his bones and body are the shape of a 23-year-old, but yeah, biologically he is a 25-year-old. Personally want to win, especially because Cameron and the fans was smack talking us, really. Honestly, I don't care what their fans have to say about Jamaica. Because at the end of the day, they're talking out of emotion and not out of facts. Will Jamaica play in January? U.S. Men national team organized games then. Will Jamaica play the U.S. Men's national team in January? The possibility exists, but don't expect a full strength Jamaican team. Number one, guys, is Cameroon. I go, I go get wap, 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 skilly bang style. Skilly bang style. You'll have chat then around them back. Wait, starts in goal. I think it will be a 4 3 3 system. Okay. I understand you say 3 4 3 3. Personally, I would like the 5 3 2. Tell the regular boys to enjoy some endole and fufu. Yeah, good food. One place is Walker. Or Demario Phillips. Oh, so physical battles with the Cameroon is not advised. Them indomitable lions are tall and strong with outstanding technical still skills. Jamaica, as Jamaican team, we've always proven to be a physically imposing outfit. We've always shown that to be our strength. They need to bring Whisper around this team so he can learn. Whisper, Cuba Mitchell, Cameron Eubank. Will all be great. Lewis Darlington. Carter Thomas looks off the pace every time he plays for Jamaica so far. Hopefully, he play better this time. I'm hoping that he will, and this will be a learning curve for him that he can move on to the next level because I can tell you there will be eyes on him. I can guarantee you that for sure. There will, there will, 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 will be eyes on him. I'm confident about that. Certainly. And for those of you that are just tuning in, guys, hit that like button. Hit that like button if we get to 150 likes. And what is the deal on Rico Lewis of Manchester City? Hit that like button and what is the deal to come? Hit that like button and what is the deal to come? Hit that like button and what is the deal to come? Hit that like button now, now, now. Let's go. Just 24 likes, 25 likes. Come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Hit that like button right now. 
hit that like button right now. Type says switch low and topi. You want low to come on this side and topi to come in the middle. Mm, I understand the logic why you do that, but I, I want to have my best central defender as the middle of the three. Personally, that's what I would like. I show an is Topi too slow. Hmm. He's getting back up to pace. I checked and read from my last game and I have not seen many color university West End town. She has been red shirt, which I doubt. Well he's done. Jamaica has to regain its respect in football, however, it will have to be earned, not given. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I've, like I've said already, look, if you want your reputation to grow, you have to do great things. And for Jamaica's reputation to grow in CONCACAF, we need to start winning some trophies and winning the Gold Cup, the Nations, they can only build our reputation within CONCACAF. If we can show, not getting to a final, but winning a tournament, that is the only way our reputation is going to grow, enhance, develop, nurture. That is when people are and their eyes are going to be on us all the time. Who is the coach for the match? Heimer Halgumson. How soon will the JFF call a camp to prepare for the Gold Cup? Gold Cup will be, camp will be two weeks before the Gold Cup physically. Before the Gold Cup, as you know, we'll have the Nations League against Mexico. And from there, we'll know if we're in the semifinals of the Nations League. You know, so still quite a bit of stuff to get through. <clears throat> Hope he will get exposed in the wider areas. I agree with the switch. So he's not defending out wide. I understand what you're saying, but centrally, when you have those one-on-ones, I prefer Damien Lowe to, to manage those one-on-ones and set up Jamoy Topi because you will have those one-on-one -on -one situations. And that is the sole reason why I want to have the central area to be extremely compact. Because let's say Topi is here and Topi is beaten, yeah? Let's say Topi is is beaten in this area by one of Cameroon's players, yeah? And the ball is here. I know Damien Lowe can come, come over swiftly to clean up the battle, clean up the danger. If Topi comes centrally, And there is that one-on-one. -on -one. When Topi is beaten, I don't see Topi running down this person here. And it's Jamali Waite and God against this person here with the ball. So that's the, the logic why I've gone with Damien Lowe at the central part. But like I said, still have a couple more days. We'll see how the training session progresses. Hopefully there's no injuries in the next couple of days and we'll be able to see exactly this unit in particular. So that is exactly what I'm hoping for. <clears throat> and that it will be a unit filled with quality, strength, panache in this team. So I'm looking forward to it. And it should be a good one. It so, was so, guys, if you haven't already, hit that like button. Hit that like button and subscribe to Reggae Boy's commentary. Come on, guys. Almost 100 of you watching and not 100 likes. Come on, guys. Hit that like button. Let's go. Hit that like button. 150 likes and you'll be able to see and hear about Rico Lewis. 
Yes. You guys know about Rico Lewis, right? Rico Lewis, quality player, Manchester City. It'll be 18 next month. We'll get a what is the deal. I'm sure you guys are, are working on that. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Let's see what you guys are saying. Mr. Gallus says, can we sub in Van Dyke for Topi? No, we can't. <coughs> Virgil van Dijk does not have Jamaican heritage, so honestly, we can't. We can't do that, so unfortunately not. It's about time Jamaica wins the Gold Cup. We see Mexico and USA as big teams, but the rest of the world doesn't. The talent gap is not that wide between Jamaica and the so-called best in the region. Hmm. It's not that wide, that is true. It's not a billion miles away. You look at this team, you look at the quality that is involved, and I can't say it's a million miles away. What the United States has to offer, Canada has to offer. There's absolutely no excuse why Jamaica should not be in 2026. Absolutely no excuse. None. USA, Canada, Mexico out of the picture. And now we're looking at Costa Rica, Panama, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala. All Jamaica needs to do is be above two of those teams. If Jamaica is above two of those five teams, three of those five teams, it could be Panama, Costa Rica, and Jamaica in 2026. This will be the best chance I ever get to get to a World Cup. Best chance ever. Just imagine it, you know. Cuba Mitchell will be 21. Cameron Eubank will be 21. Lewis Darlington, 2021. 20, Leon Bailey, 28, 29. Exciting time, eh? Exciting time ahead. This guy says, this is very true. Van Dyke sleeping for Liverpool anyways these days. Hmm. Maybe he's taking some Pandel extra drowsy. ISAP says, how many spots do the rest of Concacaf get in 2026? So Concacaf will get three automatic spots and two intercontinental playoff spots. So be the top three will get automatic spots to the World Cup, while the team that finishes fourth and fifth will head to the intercontinental playoffs. And in that intercontinental playoff, which has 10 teams, what you'll find is that three of those 10 teams will qualify for the World Cup. So... That's why I said it's a grand, grand opportunity. And I just believe that it's a chance, a big, big chance. And I, I, it's one that should not be brushed apart, brushed aside, you know. This is one for Jamaica because it won't get any easier than that. It won't. It won't get easy like this ever again. At least not for another three decades. You know? So. So. That's for us to, to process, you know? And, you know, the qualification process will commence around March next year. That's when the qualifiers will begin for 2026. And for the intercontinental playoffs, you'll have a playoff tournament including six teams and they'll decide the last two spots. So six teams to decide the last two spots. So 
you'll have two from CONCACAF, one from CONMEBOL, one from Oceania, one from Africa, one from Asia, none from UEFA. Yeah. Two of the teams will be seeded based on their FIFA ranking, and the seeded teams will play for a World Cup berth against the winner of the first two knockout games involving the unseeded teams. So it's going to be a good one, you know? It's going to be similar to what we are going to see for the 2023 edition of the Women's World Cup, you know? So, yeah. Exciting times. Exciting times ahead. So, <clears throat> we'll look forward to what lies ahead. It's certainly a time for everyone to look forward to. Sure. I know Virgil Van Dyke is her name is Heritage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Right. Marvin Perrin says, good night, Simon. Who is going to be the playmaker and who is going to break the break a play in the middle for us? Well, Lamar Walker will be that sort of playmaker for us. He will be that sort of individual that feeds the possession to the front two and basically operate as a player where he looks for these passes left, right, and center. Speedy is not going to do the dirty work per se, but Kevin Lambert will do that dirty work. So that's something that we can look forward to. Exciting times, eh? So we look forward to see how that works out. And it should be one that we all embrace with open arms. And of course, as we know, we talk, when we talk about playoffs, the reggae girls are going to take on Paraguay, and Paraguay is going to face Chinese Taipei in the in the intercontinental playoffs next year in New Zealand. So they play Chinese Taipei, and then if they beat Chinese Taipei, then they play Papua New Guinea or Panama. So, yeah. So, yeah, that'd be good. And their coach, um, Marcelo uh, Figueroa. Coached a lot of teams, you know, during his time. Quite a bit of teams. Coach Equatorial Guinea at the Women's World Cup. <clears throat> so, should be a good unit. Yeah. Look forward to these games and what lies ahead. Paraguay, you know, they've never been to the World Cup, but fourth in the Copa America. They did face the Jamaican team at the Pan American Games, though. So, yeah. To the next one, you know. Rebel Art G F X S Knight Simon got in late. Any discussion on the ladies and their upcoming match versus Paraguay? Yeah, next week we will talk about the Reggae Girls. You know, we spoke about the games taking place on next week, Thursday, and of course on Sunday. First game in Montego Bay, and of course the second game will take place at the National Stadium. So I'll give more details as to the Reggae Girls are supposed to be flying into Jamaica on the weekend. So we look forward to that. I'm surprised Malik Foster wasn't given a chance. He had a good season in the USL. Hmm. Anyone in Ireland, lo location of the camp, media, a lot of training. Oh, you're talking about Reggae Girls? Well, bearing in mind that the first game will be in Montego Bay, the team will be based in St. James for that first encounter. And of course, after that game on Friday, on Thursday, on Friday, that's when it, that's when that they'll head to Kingston for the next game. 
Vassal should be in the squad, says Live 11 Radio. Yeah, I've heard that before. We need to take a look at Odin Pennycook from Tivoli Gardens FC. Good player, you know. I've seen him before. Very, very good player. How does Paraguay play in comparison to Brazil, France? Stubborn outfits. Stubborn outfits. You know, a team that doesn't give a lot away. A team that really, really is going to be a stern test for the Jamaicans. I think we have the attacking prowess, though, to get some goals under our belt. But it's not going to be easy peasy. I still think that there's going to be an aspect for us to ensure that we go out there and, you know, <clears throat> get some goals. Simon, who do you think is going to play the defensive midfield for Jamaica? Jamaica need at least three good defensive midfielders and also a three good playmaker. Defensive midfield for the game against Cameroon. I would have to say that you're going to have Speedy and Kevin Lambert in this game in particular. Rob Smith says, I hope this game is televised. Yeah, I hope so too. I hope so too. Cameroon is a physical team, says Isabs. Yep, very, very physical team. That's for certain. Wish I could have seen two thirds under 20 players in the boys' squad, but I figure school is an issue. Well, the next thing is that the UK based under 20 players like Badley Morgan and Kanaya Boys Clark and Jamari Clark and company, you know, they have, they're not available for this fixture, you know. How long is the journey from Jamaica to Cameroon? Well, the thing is that there is no straight flight from Jamaica to Cameroon, so you'll have to connect through either the United States or Canada. So we're talking about an eight, nine, ten hour journey, you know, depending from those locations. So it is a long flight. Bearing that in mind, you know, so one way or the other, there is going to be a long distance travel for the Jamaican unit for these games. So that is what we need to be firmly aware about. Come on guys, hit that like button. Let's go. Hit that like button. Use a super chat feature guys to your question, comments, highlight it as well. Use a super chat feature and you'll be able to let know, be able to process everything that is necessary. The players are in Miami, was Richard King able to travel? You'll have different routes. So it's not all players that will be flying from Miami, but Richard King is expected to be there in, expected to be in Cameroon for sure. You know? The local base members left today at 2.30 from the Donald Sangster International Airport. And team manager Roy Simpson indicated that Kimar Taxi Lawrence has not yet given a final confirmation that he'll travel, but efforts are still being made to include him part of the squad. So, yeah. Has Cameroon and Jamaica played before? No. These teams have never faced each other at the senior level before. Jamaica has faced off against African teams such as Nigeria, Zambia, South Africa, Ghana, Morocco, Egypt. But Jamaica has never, ever, ever faced Cameroon before. So this will be the first time that both teams are actually facing off against each other. Jamaica has played South Africa. Jamaica has played Ghana, Nigeria, Egypt, Morocco, you know? So <clears throat> Jamaica has faced against a lot of African teams. So it really is a, an interesting record that Jamaica has had in these fixtures in particular. You know, when you bear in mind the the results, some results are quite encouraging in these encounters. Quite, quite encouraging when you look at these these fixtures. You know, Cameroon, Jamaica's never faced or played against Cameroon. 
never faced Cameroon before. Now, in relation to Egypt, Jamaica draw 2 2 against Egypt back in 2014. Against Zambia, Jamaica's 1 1, lost 2 and drawn 1. In South Africa, Jamaica's drawn 4 games and lost 1 against South Africa. Morocco played 2, lost 2. Against Ghana, played 2, lost 2. <clears throat> Nigeria, 1 1, drawn 3 and lost 2 games. So that was Jamaica's record against. Nigeria specifically. So, an interesting record, it has to be said, and against the Nigerian outfit. So, that basically wraps up things against a African outfit. Big up to the man that have a correct answer to almost everything concerned to Jamaica. <laughs> big up Eric so I hope you're doing good just joining big up MPEG TV how are you doing good evening hope you and your family are doing okay also like that player Tyreek Wilson a midfielder from Alliance United he kicks the dead ball like a rocket strong force don't it very very strong will all three Viking be on the side lanes in Cameroon coach goalkeeper coach and technical specialist I can confirm that the head coach will be there. <coughs> the head coach will be there. The head coach will be there for this game in particular. And just a reminder of the squad, Jamali Waite, Kemar Foster, Alwyn Harvey, Damian Lowe, Jamoy Topi, Javain Brown, Malik Howell, Ricardo Thomas, Richard King, Demari Phillips, Devon Williams, Dwayne Atkinson, Kevon Lambert, Lamar Walker, Colorado Mori, Jordan Fletcher, Justin McMaster, Peter McGregor, and Trevante Stewart. Wonderful, wonderful. And guys, as you know, I actually played with Justin McMaster. You guys know already that this is somebody that I played with in high school as well. He was the center forward. I was the center half. And I saw the ability when you had this 13-year-old from, from first, from second form coming to play with us. I'm like, who's this kid? Justin McMaster. He's come to train with us and... Look, he had a lot of heart, a lot of spirit. I had a lot of class. And, and honestly, I think that he d demonstrated great ability. You know what I'm saying? He definitely put in on a good foot and showed exactly what he was on about. So I think he deserves exactly what has come his way. Tuffy so already says, Bless up, Simon. Great job keeping us informed during your UK tour. Thank you very much. And there's a couple more interviews for you guys to see. So if you guys haven't already, do check out the interviews that have been uploaded with Darren Moore, Ricardo Fuller, Ricardo Gardner, Alika Keen, Cuba Mitchell, Cameron Eubank, and Kieran Agard. Still a couple more to get through. Quite a bit more to post. So stay tuned, guys. Quite a lot more to, and you guys will be in excited by what is to come. I can tell you that as a fact. Do you know if the game will be shown on the CONCACAF channel? The Jamaica Cameroon game? No. No, 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 no. Lamar Walker for me is the star of this team attacking wise, but big up Kepa Lowe for his dedication. Absolutely. We're talking about an individual in Damien Lowe that loves his country. Very passionate. And he will always accept that Jamaican call. Once he's fit and able, he makes himself available for the country. So that's something that you know about Damien Lowe. Once he's has the ability and no extenuating circumstances, then he plays for the country. You know, so that's the reality of the situation there for him. Plus up Simon Manners in respect to one and all. Big up Krista J. Wallace. Hope you're doing well, sir. Big up, and I hope you are well. Joel Smith says, Big up, Simon. Big up, Joel. Hope you and your family are doing well. Great to hear from you. So, look, I've gone with a 5 3 2 for this game against the Cameroonian outfit. 
Jamali Waite, Richard King, Jamoy Topi, Damien Lowe, Speedy Williams, Kevin Lambert, Lamar Walker, Carla Thomas, left wing back, Jermaine Brown, right wing back, Jordan Fletcher, and Justin McMaster. So, so there we go. So yeah, quite a lot, eh? So there we go. I've spoken about the importance of this guy right here, and Javian Brown, and also this guy as well. They can't afford to be in these sorts of positions. When his team, when they're when the Jamaicans are not in possession, because here and here will be exploited. It's not like a back four. Where you have a bit of cover. It's different. So when you have that back three now. Covers a lot of space centrally, but the wider areas are there to be penetrated. Simon, we need two attacking young strikers in the Reggae Boys team. Present strikers are are in present strikers are in their thirties and slowing down. Okay. Duly noted, sir. Well, let us see what Justin McMaster has to bring to the table. Do you know if Taxi accept the invitation? He's still to accept that invitation. Still to accept that invitation. Herbal Art GFX says, I'll go with 3-4-3 or 5-2-3. I anticipate a long of play will come down our wing very rapidly if we let them breathe in their half. I don't want to have two in that midfield. I'd rather have three instead of two, because when it's just two, then you give the opposition an, an opportunity to focus on these two individuals. But when you have three, it's a bit more difficult. Odd numbers are harder to deal with in life and also in football. Trust me on that one. I mean, I do understand where you're going at, but honestly speaking in football, it is much, much more challenging when you have a scenario where it is this situation in particular. So that's where we are right now. So just a reminder again of the squad that has been called up to face Cameroon in the upcoming Friendly International. Without further ado, here we go. Jamali Waite, Kimar Foster, Alvin Harvey, Damien Lowe, Jamoy Topi, Javain Brown, Malik Howell, Ricardo Thomas, Richard King, Demario Phillips, Devon Williams, Dwayne Atkinson, Kevin Lambert, Lamar Walker, Colorado Murray, Jordan Fletcher, Justin McMaster, Peter McGregor, and Trevante Stewart. That's 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 11, 13, 14, 16, 18, 19 players. So Kemar Taxi Lawrence would be 20 if he's added to this squad in particular. 19 players, 11 take the field, so 8 subs. If Taxi is in, 9 subs. I expect all outfield players ex to play, except all outfield players to play. So it's just, I think, it, I don't think the both, both goalkeepers will get an opportunity, but we'll see. We'll see. What's the deal with uh, Rico Lewis? 100 likes on this video, 150 likes on this video, and you'll get a what is the deal on Rico Lewis. 150 likes on this video. And you'll get a deal. What is the deal on Rico Lewis? So hit the smash that like button, guys. Smash that like button. 150 likes. And you guys will know what is to come. Make sense? Well, Cameron Archer, Jamali Clark, Kate and Eva Edwards, Bozo is still young. Yeah, they are. 
And bear in mind, you know, Archer is <laughs> he's only 20. He's only 20, the man from Walsall. Aston Villa, Sully Hall, went on loan at Preston, scored seven goals in 20 games, basically a goal every three games, you know what I mean? Archer did well in the League Cup. The younger brother of Jordan McFarlane Archer. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, let's see what, what else is, is going to take place over in the Midlands. Aston Villa. 1982. A year that the club will never forget. Winning... European Cup with Dennis Mortimer as their captain. <clears throat> Randy Lerno, club owner for a decade. Good players in their roster, you know. Very, very good players, part of their roster. We know the situation with Ollie Watkins, don't we? So, keep a close eye on Jacob Ramsey. And also Cameron Archer, but we know Cameron Archer is the forward of these players. Louis Barry is now Jamaican heritage, but it's a player that I've been extremely fond of from his time at Barcelona. Pity he only spent a season there, but good player in Louis Barry. Now Tim K. Dunn is getting valuable minutes under his belt. Keenan Davis, Courtney Hawes. Good players. <laughs> Andy Gray. Andy Gray was at Aston Villa at one point. Yeah. Good times, eh? You'll hear the man hit that like button. Yep, you hear it, guys. Hit that like button. Hit that like button, guys. 150 likes of this video. And you guys will be able to get a what is the deal on Rico Lewis. Sounds good, guys? Sounds good. Okay, good. How does that sound? Sounds good? I think it sounds like a fair deal. What do you guys think about that? Coach Hammer Elgrimson, if you're watching, please bring in Cameron Archer. Jacob Ramsey's also a gym. He is, isn't he? Quite so. Well, Rego Boys fans, thank you very much for tuning in. 150 likes. And this, and uh, what is the deal, Enrico Lewis, will come your way quite soon. All right? More videos to come. Exclusives to come tomorrow. Stay tuned for that. Trust me. You don't want to miss it. All right, guys? Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe to Radio Boys Commentary for more content. Lots of things to come your way. Stay tuned. Hi everybody, I'm Darren Moore and you're watching Reggae Boys Country. This, this video is brought to you by MPEC Printery, specializing in t-shirt printing, posters and shipping from the USA. Call 876-775-6692 or 876-337-7374. Andy Gone Nuts. 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876-309-6128. That's 876-309-6128. Refreshing and affordable. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Andy Gone Nuts. Mmm, truly refreshing. And Crumble by Mrs. C. 
Old English fudge and other delectable sweet treats. Call or WhatsApp 876-586-0471. That's 876-586-0471. This video is also brought to you by BLC Jamaica Security Electronics, specializing in alarm system, video surveillance, camera system or CCTV, barrier system, gate automation, and access control. Call 876-320-7711. That's 876-320-7711. Or 876-351-1105. That's 876-351-1105.